All right, folks, I had a request to go over a little more of the idea of logarithmic decay as a first order reaction. So we, we learned the express, this sort of expression back in chemistry one for half-life of radioactive materials. We actually learned it two, way, two ways in, in the logarithmic decay and then a related idea called the half-life. We'll discuss both. We spend most of the time on this, but I would at least try to show you both approaches. So in this case, let's say that we're having a chemical that we're trying to get rid of. So we're really not concerned so much with the non-toxic products as getting rid of the toxic reactants. So we have a chemical spill. Let's see a train containing some toxic chemical uh, turns over and dumps a bunch of toxic substance X into a lake. And so it is immediately tested. Uh, they don't know a lot about X, you know, it's maybe still a fairly new product or whatever. But they find that, you know, immediately we have a concentration of 42.5 milligrams per liter in this lake. Oh my, that's pretty toxic. So they keep testing and then after 6.5 months they find 22 0.6 milligrams were found after that. So if we assume that this is a first order decay reaction, let's just assume that it is. Let's say the data has shown us that. Uh, we've taken maybe several data points. But we, uh, what would be a standardized rate that we could, decay rate that we could derive from this? And this is where we bring out the logarithmic decay equation. There's other ways of writing this. I, I'm not really a math guy, and this always looked kind of Visually, it made a little more sense to me. It may not to you, but this is how I learned it and how, you know, I, I like to view it at times. So, um, you have a naught. This zero is a naught. So, that's often used to mean your amount at a certain start or time. You know, at the, at the time we start observing the phenomenon of this substance. And if we multiply that times logarithmic e, 2.718 irrational number just like pi, raise the negative time times some sort of constant, we can find out how much is left over at that particular time. Now the negative, of course, is necessary to make this a declining curve. If the negative weren't there, we would have a rising curve. So we're wanting to get rid of this stuff. So we plug in our known values here. And what we're trying to do is isolate A. So of course, take that natural log after we bring him over to this side. So what that does is it gets rid of logarithmic E because they're the inverses of each other. They cancel out to one. It also brings down time and the constant out of the exponent to where we can algebraically work it. So now all we do is just simply bring him over to the side after we've resolved this expression we we'll get this as our decay constant. So now this work, we have a predictive model. So let's say, what would it be after 14 months? We could, you know, work that out. So, you know, so how much is left over at time 14 months? Well, we could simply plug in our new constant into this expression and work that out. So why don't you stop your your device right now, put this video on pause and see if you can work it out. Okay, meanwhile, I'm gonna work it out. So after you try, shut it back on and see what kind of results we get. Okay, so I just did this. What I did is I simply plugged in our equation here. Here's our A naught. Here's our logarithmic E, raised the negative of our time. We decided 14 months. 
okay, times our newly derived constant. When we plug all that in, we get about 10.9 milligrams per liter less. So we're continuing to climb in decaying this reactant into something that is less toxic, which is good. And we hope after so many months, it will be so low that it will no longer consider to be harmful. Some toxic substances persist for years. Others may only for days. It just sort of depends. So that is your, this is one approach to looking at first order decay. The other one is the half-life approach. And this is just kind of a, it's kind of like pH when scientists decided to kind of use this type of modeling. It's kind of, it's easier for regular folks to understand. Like in pH, we could say, oh, wow, this stream is one times 10 to the negative three power molar concentration of hydrogen ions. Man, that's not good. That's kind of hard to relate to. But if I say, hey, this stream is so acidic, it's got a pH of three, people can kind of grasp that order of magnitude. So similarly, half-life is sort of a way that people can sort of intuitively see the progression of decay in successive halvings of, of the material, how much time it takes for one half to break down, and then how much time will it take for half of that to break down to 25%, and then half of 25 to break down to 12.5. You know, ultimately, most like radioactive substances are thought to be more or less safe after five half-life time constants. So the way that this is derived is in this expression. You take your a naught, your amount at starting time, times half, you could actually physically write one half, which is 0.5, raised to the time elapsed divided by the half-life, and we're tall. Tall is a, sort of a universal symbol for time constant. And this is tall half, it means time constant for half-life. And so we can simply plug in, we can work out the half-life, plug it in the, with our starter data. We can model out the half-life. We have a starter time, we have an amount left over, and we have a time elapsed. So if we plug that into the equation, here's the amount left over, here's the amount we started with, here's half, here's the time elapsed, all we have to do is solve for this. And we simply do that bringing A naught over, divide it into uh, AT, and then, of course, we do that, take the natural log on both sides to bring this guy down, and also we want to bring him over. So since we took the natural log of him, we bring that natural log over, and then all that's left is this part, and then algebraically we solve. And so we determined that for this substance X, it takes about 7.13 months for this to decay down to half of its original substance. So this is saying that after 7.13 months, we'll have half of this nasty stuff left. And then after 7.13 months, which would be 14.26 months, we'd be down to 25%. Then after three half-lives, which would be 21.39 months, we'd be down to 12.5% and so forth. And so once again, both of these are perfectly usable this is the version that we use for this class mostly, but I, I would be remiss if I did not at least tie this into a form of, of logarithmic decay that we have already learned and, quite, and is serviceable and is frequently used, particularly when dealing with toxic nuclear and chemical substances because regular folks can often really intuitively understand that rather than sort of that continuous decay constant here. And you know, once again, this is pretty much the way we normally think of things, but you will encounter this often. There's nothing wrong with that. And this is often the, I guess, maybe the way of looking at decay that the public winds up finding out more about.